Surfshark just turned five years old and I've decided to download one of the earliest developed Surfshark app versions that I could find and see how it runs today. Guys, we're literally going to jump back to the stone age of VPNs in this video, so get subscribed and like the video. Okay, so Surfshark turning five years old, I really had to think long and hard on what kind of video we could make. And we could have made some kind of celebration video or whatever, but instead I texted one of our Windows developers and said, give me the oldest Surfshark app version you got. And they were like, okay, let me see. And after a dozen minutes or so, they sent me this .exe file installer of the 2.5.4 version of the Surfshark Windows app. And noted, by the way, the system won't even let you use it because it's so old, but that won't stop me. So the version I'll be showing you today was first released in 2019. In other words, pretty darn old. Okay. so. I can't even install this version because it's telling me that a more recent version of Surfshark is already installed, which is true. Pro tip for all of you is that always use the latest version of Surfshark and it will work the best, but obviously for this particular video, we're just having a bit of fun. So I'll have to delete the version that I have now. And here we go. Look at that interface, version 2.5.4. The login screen is definitely simpler than it is today, but it does the job. Notice how there's no login with code option or login with Google or Apple. So you're really left to just typing everything manually. I'll be honest, I'm really eager to log in and see how the app looks on the home screen. And look at that, it's a whole lot different. This video kind of reminds me of the video that we did earlier this year about Windows 7. It's like, you know, seeing an old friend, but they look a bit different. Let's connect right now and look at that. Okay, so immediately you'll notice that the app is missing some things, but it also has some additional things too. First, the locations tab is actually very similar to the modern day app. It just gives you a list of all the VPN countries you can connect to. Let's now hit on the features and check this out. You got clean web over here, whitelister, and something called privacy beyond VPN. So clean web is obviously something that still exists today. It blocks ads and trackers online. Whitelister on the other hand is now called bypasser. And here, just like on today's app, I can choose which apps go through the VPN and vice versa. Aside from the name change, they are still relatively the same. Now, these next two tabs called hack lock and blind search are actually the two additional features that you could get on top of your current subscription. So blind search today is known as Surfshark search and hack lock today is known as Surfshark alert. So these names were changed in 2020 and that was mostly because hack lock and blind search while they sound cool, they don't really represent how the feature works. For instance, the name alert does sound more appropriate for what alert does, which is alert you if any of your emails were leaked online. But hey, you know, if you like the other names better or vice versa, let me know in the comments below. I'm actually really interested to hear what you guys say. Now, I think a lot of you will be wondering about what is this mini mode tab in the corner here? Well, if I click on it, it basically makes the app super small and connect button becomes like a switch that you can toggle. To be honest, I really don't know where this would be useful, like, which is, you know, probably why it was removed later on. Before I show you something really cool that's included in this app, let's quickly go over the settings menu. What's different from the modern day Surfshark app is that instead of four different category buttons, you just get a list of items. Obviously back then Surfshark didn't have as many features as it does now. So it kind of makes sense why they would pee in the list like that but you still get your most essential things at the top, like your logout button, change password button, checking for app updates, and et cetera. Even dark mode was here back in 2019, which is actually pretty cool. Here in the connectivity tab, we can enable the app to start with Windows, enable auto connect or kill switch. So that was all still there back in 2019. And here in the advanced tab, you got your protocol options. As you can see back in the day, there was no wire guard, but there was shadow socks protocol, which was meant to work best in restrictive countries like China. However, later on it was removed due to not being as secure as the other protocols. And also there was a problem where people who don't live in restrictive countries would use it. So it ultimately it was decided to just remove it and use something like WireGuard instead. At the bottom, there's also the invisible to devices option, which actually, if I remember correctly, exists in modern day Surfshark apps as well. It basically makes your device invisible to even your other LAN devices. It's like an extra safety feature, which is really nice to have actually. Okay, so that's pretty much it, but wait, there's more. If we go back to Surfshark main tab and click on this sandwich icon, here you can customize how the connect button works, either connects you to the fastest or nearest location. Okay, so where's the fun part? Well, if you look at the bottom, 
it says enter hyperspace. So if we click that, the whole app goes dark and certain text changes as well. So now the connect button, I can customize it to connect to the fastest ship instead of the fastest country. So that's a bit different. You're seeing a bit different of a vibe there. And check the main connect screen. Countries are now called planets. That's really cool. So in, and if we connect, let's just say to the Netherlands, it says jumping and whoa, destination reached. So what the hell is going on? What What is happening here? I mean, it's a whole different theme here included in the Surfshark app. Back in 2019, the main dev working behind Surfshark Windows application was Nick. He's a really cool guy and he still works here today. And I actually got to interview him back when Surfshark Nexus came out last year. I'll actually put a video right here if you wanna check that out. Like I said, he still works here today and today he's actually a system engineer. So he's no longer developing this app. However, he was and still is a huge, and I mean huge, fan of Star Wars. So yeah, he was so inspired by Star Wars that he decided to, hey, let's make this theme on the Surfshark Windows app, which quite honestly is really, really cool. Look, even the toggle switches become like little lightsabers and I just, I just love it. This, this theme is so cool and I actually wanna kinda wanna just go back to using this app version, even though it's probably really broken by today's standards, uh, but it's just so cool to have this, honestly. But anyway, I think that'll conclude the video here. I'm just really happy for Surfshark turning five years old. It's a big achievement, still going strong in the cybersecurity industry. So if you like this old app revisit video, maybe you want to see some more in the future, make sure to hit like and subscribe to our channel for more content. By the way, if you want to check out more of our videos, I'll leave a few of them right over here. And uh, yeah, that'll be all from me. Take care.